a warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems till now we have covered four chapters of this course namely introduction and basics of matlab basics of matlab programming tools from linear algebra and signals and systems monte carlo methods random these were the four chapters that we had uh, covered till now and uh, these formed the theoretical backbone or uh, these formed the theoretical foundation that is required to practically simulate communication systems in matlab so we will now go a bit faster also this was supposed to be the first third of the course the these four chapters but uh, from what i have understood while recording these that uh, these first four chapters have taken up slightly more than a half of the course till now so we will still try to cover everything in as much detail as possible just that uh, we will uh, we might not be able to go into certain details that were that i had planned earlier so that uh, we'll see as we go through this course and uh, now starting this lecture we will start dealing with practical signals and we will start off with lossy compression of practical signals so in this chapter we will talk about sources of information we will quickly revisit ideas from sampling and quantization we will talk about uh, linear predictive coding or lpc for ar processes we have covered ar processes in detail in the previous chapter we will talk about principal component analysis and images or transform domain compression so we won't restrict ourselves to images we will just talk about uh, the transform domain compression and we will talk about the jpeg standard so i should say that we won't code this explicitly will provide a background on how this works we will not code this in the jpeg standard explicitly but we will provide a background on the how the jpeg standard works fine so that said let us start and uh, when we say information the first thing about information is anything that we do not in colloquial terms this is not a strict mathematical definition please uh, be aware of that in colloquial terms anything we do not know prior or the outcome of any random experiment or any random outcome will translate to information so for humans for just uh, i'm just talking about human consumption the sources of information sources of information so in this is the definition of information so sources of information for human consumption are as follows we have text textual data obviously all of us read so text is a form of information the most basic form of information then there is speech there are images there is video so canonical or uh, colloquially these are the forms of information that we as humans are uh, subject to so now out of these these three are actually analog signals or signals that 
exist at all points of time and can take any real value. These are all of these are analog signals and these analog signals need to be so we perceive also perceive these as continuous time continuous valued signals. So, uh, the problem is that these are continuous time by continuous valued signals and we perceive them as continuous time con continuous valued signals. So, actually if you look at it then there is no problem, but there is a problem. We want or but all our modern day communication equipment as well as storage because storage is a form of communication. So, all our modern day communication equipment is digital. So, we want to communicate these signals to a larger audience, we want to communicate speech to a larger audience, we want to communicate images to a larger audience, we want to communicate video to a larger audience, but all of these are analog signals and communication equipment as well as we want to process these signals. Computing equipment, communication equipment and computing equipment are both digital. So, the question that faces us is that how do we communicate analog signals digitally? How do we communicate analog signals digitally? So, again the question is what is the problem in communicating analog signals digitally? What is the problem with signals digitally. The answer is digital signals can exist only at fixed points in time. So, unlike continuous signals or unlike analog signals, digital signals are only defined for uh, certain time instants that is one thing that it takes uh, value this at this time instant and after manipulation, this is after manipulation, what kind of manipulation I would not go into that, digital, digital signals can only represent values from discrete sets. Even after manipulation, digital signals can represent values from discrete sets. So, basically the problem is that uh, instead of continuous time signals, get discrete time signals. Instead of continuous time signals, we get discrete time signals 1 and 2. Instead of signals that can take any amplitude, we get signals 
that can only take an amplitude out of a fixed set of so for example consider this sine wave consider this badly drawn sine wave time and amplitude so now i put up uh, restrictions that it is only defined at 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 1 2 3 and i'll put another point here 8 so i take 8 points and so a discrete sine wave can only be defined at uh, these points this so a discrete sine wave can only be defined at these points so if i put an eraser over this red line boom this is uh, already gone or this is uh, this already looks less like a sine wave and now let us use let us say that i can only have amplitudes that correspond to amplitudes on this I can only have amplitudes that correspond to amplitudes on this grid so if i do that I'll use purple color for this and at this point actually if i round off i get this this at this point this point i might get this this point again i get this then at this point get this this point this this point this this and this so if i now remove these black dots as well this is what is left of my sine wave so you cannot easily say that uh, this is a sine wave with some amplitude and uh, some frequency you just uh, have this so basically uh, in the process of analog to digital conversion the process of analog to digital signals we are at risk of losing information and a good analog to digital conversion operation or a good analog to digital conversion would mean that we lose the minimum good analog to digital version should not lose information at all or should lose minimal amount of information or again colloquially analog to digital conversion is translating analog signal to something digital can understand it is translating analog signals to something digital computers can understand and we want to minimize the losses in we want to minimize the losses in translation the, so the question so we at the outset we agree that there will be losses in translation but uh, the question is 
how do we minimize the losses in this translation. So, for that we have to look at the analog to digital conversion process and uh, the analog to digital conversion process is again I will repeat this, but you might have done this on a basic course on communications, but uh, still it is good to repeat this is divided into three parts sampling which means convert continuous time signal to a discrete time signal quantization convert the continuous amplitude time samples to discrete valued time samples source coding represent the consequent samples such that take up minimum amount of memory or require minimal amount of resources to so good communication is not only about transmitting a signal but is it is also about uh, representing signals so that uh, they can be transmitted using the minimal amount of resources. So, we will take up, uh, so a major part of this chapter is actually dedicated to source coding or uh, we will see how we can lose certain parts of information in a signal and uh, compress it to a large extent. So, the first thing that we will do is or out of this analog digital conversion, the first topic that we will cover is sampling, we will quickly cover that and sampling basically as I said is uh, related to a converting a con continuous time signal to a discrete time signal. So, sampling basically continuous time signal x t to x n t s that be represented the sequence x n. So, we take a signal x t and uh, convert it into a sequence x n t s. So, t s is the sampling time, t s is the sampling time and here comes in the notion of the Nyquist rate. So, given that x t is a band limited signal that is there exists bandwidth b the Fourier transform xf of xt 0 for all then can exactly reconstruct x t sorry x t from its samples taken every t s seconds as long as 
1 over Ts is greater than or equal to 2p or as long as as you sample xt rate that is greater than twice the bandwidth of the signal you can exactly recover xt from xn. So, you can exactly recover xt from xn or xt from its sample. So, given that xt is band limited, you can recover given that, that xt is xt to xn to say x hat t converting this back to an analog signal is a completely lossless process is a completely lossless process. So, that is the so now this band limited how does this band limited thing help us? So, as I said colloquially or uh, for human consumption most of the signals we are restricted to speech images and uh, we are restricted to video or uh, the, mo most of the signals that uh, we are we want to deal with are audio visual signals and uh, both our audio and visual senses are basically low pass senses or whatever we perceive in terms of both uh, audio and uh, images is severely band limited. For example, I do not know the exact uh, specifications for our visual system, but uh, so that uh, actually also depends on the distance at which you are perceiving something that uh, you can derive using basic laws of diffraction from your physics course. So, I will not uh, go into those details, but uh, for audio for example, we can only perceive sounds up to 20 kilohertz. We can only perceive sounds up to 20 kilohertz. Anything above 20 kilohertz is complete garbage for us or actually not garbage, we cannot perceive it. So, it is useless. So, what we can do is take a take any audio signal, filter it appropriately so that we do not uh, get any frequency components above 20 kilohertz and uh, so that makes it band limited at 20 kilohertz and uh, if we sample it at something say like 44.1 kilohertz or 40 kilohertz actually that Nyquist rate will be 40 kilohertz, but uh, still CD quality audio or uh, CD quality audio is sampled at 44.1 kilohertz. So, if you sample it at 44.1 kilohertz after appropriate uh, anti-aliasing filtering you get a signal which is practically band limited and you can reconstruct this practically band limited signal from its uh, samples exactly. So, and uh, this is sampling and uh, Similarly, we will just briefly discuss quantization in this lecture and uh, we will come to the details of quantization in the next lecture. So, sampling we have seen can be a lossless procedure, but uh, unfortunately quantization that is the conversion of continuous valued means valued signal to a discrete valued signal is not a lossless procedure. This is similar to rounding off that uh, we have uh, done in primary school that uh, what we are trying to do is uh, that since we cannot uh, measure signals or we cannot store. So, the problem is that we cannot store. So, a continuous valued signal can have any. So, 
it can be 2.0000 you can cannot count the number of zeros and then a 1 but uh, as we did in the starting of this course we discussed the floating point format the single precision and the double precision format there are limits to the size of the numbers that uh, or uh, there are limits to the number of zeros that we can put before and after the decimal so that uh, we get numbers which are practically meaningful and any number smaller or larger than those are treated either as infinity or as zero so there is a limit to the precision that uh, we can practically have though that uh, those that precision is still quite big but uh, still there is a limit to the precision that uh, we can have so practically or digitally we can only have finite precision practically we can only have finite precision signals so what we are doing here in quantization is that we are taking a continuous valued random variable x and we are mapping it to a discrete valued random variable x hat and such that that we are able to guess almost surely again colloquially I say this colloquially not mathematically so such that we can guess almost surely the value of x or the mapping is to be such that the error between x and x hat is minimized so the error is minimized but uh, the question is that how do we say that uh, we have minimized the error so we say that or in what sense do we say we minimize the errors so we say that the error is minimized because an error is a random quantity and uh, we cannot absolutely minimize so naturally since x is random x hat will is also a random variable the difference will also be a random variable and we cannot uh, explicitly claim to have minimized a random number we can what we can only claim or what we can claim is can claim instead is that we try to minimize the error power or the error variance so since the if we assume the error process to be white and stationary process we can equate its variance to its power and say that we are trying to minimize the error power so that is how we do quantization or an ideal quantizer would want to minimize the error power so in the next lecture we will look up this problem of uh, quantization we will try to minimize it and we will try to build what is known as the lloyd max quantizer using matlab so this is a preview and uh, with that we stop thank you mm -hmm.